hold on to my heart pails. If I'm losing my shirt in there, I'm gonna fake a heart attack. Now that's your cue to come in, waving the pills, screaming, My daddy's having a heart attack! My daddy's having a heart attack! Hello, fellow people. Let me start by saying I'm pretty sick right now, but I don't get a whole lot of time to record these videos, so please bear with me. But alright, let's jump into it. I'd like to introduce you guys to a new friend of the channel. Introducing the new face of my videos. This is something I've been wanting to do for a while, but I wasn't quite sure what I wanted him to look like. So after a lot of thinking, here he is. You may be wondering, why this? Why the Frankenstein? It's not Halloween. Well, true. But I wanted this avatar to be something I really liked, and I do really, really like it. I enjoy the spooky stuff, and I'm a really big fan of the 60s sitcom The Monsters, so I figured Frankenstein would be perfect, and the clothing is just kind of what I dress like in real life. So hopefully you guys enjoy him as much as I do and I absolutely have to give a shout out to the person who put this together for me. I'm not even going to begin to butcher the name, but here it is on the screen. They put this together for me in the exact style that I wanted, and basically every detail was perfect. The turnaround time was incredible, and I cannot recommend this person enough. But anyway, I've been watching a lot of King of the Hill lately, and it's really put me in the mood to make another video on it. After a little thinking, I thought maybe I should talk about someone that I really don't like. I thought Khan? No. Cotton? Nah. Nancy? Nah. Oh, what about Caleb? You know, the dusty old bones kid? Dusty old bones, full of green dust. Dusty oh, look, Lila. Bones, Caleb wrote another one of his songs. Dusty old bones, full of green dust. Dusty he is so creative. Dust. Dusty old bones. But then it hit me. And that's why this video, we're going to be talking about none other than Buck Strickland. I'm sure you all know about Buck Strickland, but for those who don't, here's a little backstory. So when Hank was younger, he sold dungarees at Jeans West. And honestly, I had to Google what dungarees were. Apparently, they're just like blue denim jeans. But anyway, Buck Strickland was actually one of his first customers, and he was so impressed with Hank's selling skills and worth ethic that he recruited him to Strickland Propane and kind of took him under his wing, so to speak. Through the years, Buck filled that father figure role Hank never had with Cotton. So fast forward 20 years later, and Hank is still working for Strickland as Buck's golden goose. The problem with their relationship is, Hank looks up to Buck like he's a father and Buck looks down to Hank like he's some type of get out of jail free card. And with Hank looking up to Buck like he does, and Buck being, well, not a great person, Hank lets him take advantage of him like you wouldn't believe. He's had Hank dispose of illegal drugs, he got emus for a failed business investment, and when he no longer needed the emus, he sent Hank to murder them. Heck, he even tried to frame Hank for a murder. Be premature. I know you fooled around with Debbie Old Top. No, not true, I rebut. But you were angry at her. Yes. Louder. Yes, I was angry. Debbie threatened to tell my wife that we had sexual relations. Okay, Hank. I, I got all I need. I mean, this man has an entire page dedicated to him on the Villains Wiki website. Here's a few crimes he's credited for. Corruption, incrimination, bribery, gambling, assault, illegal boxing matches, conning, pollution, adultery, substance abuse, child endangerment, drunk driving, stalking, fraud, animal cruelty. <sighs> man, and that's not even all of it. Now clearly all of this is really bad, but in the episode we're talking about today, The Buck Stops Here, he did something I truly believe should have ended the relationship between Hank and Buck. Let's start from the beginning. The episode starts with Bobby in bed saying he was up all night watching TV. I was watching the taxi marathon on Nick at night. Thank you very much. Bobby, in this house you don't get to sleep through your summer vacation and watch what were probably repeats all night like some shut-in. Hank hands Bobby a list of chores. Problem is, Hank enjoys doing all the chores himself. Hank decides he'll do the chores, but Bobby's getting a summer job. Though I'm not very employable. No skills, bad attitude, seventh grade education, but we can try. And now we get Peggy's side story. But this video isn't really about Peggy, so I'm going to be summarizing her entire side story up really quickly. It's a pretty pointless side story, so don't worry, you're not going to be missing too much. Peggy and men run into each other at a blood donation drive and both of their egos kick in. The prize for donating the most gallons of blood is a mug. Men is super close to the gallon donated and Peggy, well, being Peggy, can't let men win that mug before she does. She's told she can only donate so much blood in a week, so she travels all the way to another county to donate more blood. Yada 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 yada, Peggy gets the mug before men and donated so much blood that she nearly killed herself in the process. Okay, back on track. We see Hank at Strickland Propane when Buck pulls up. Hank asks if Bobby could work as a tank wipe for the summer, but Buck already filled the position to Miss Liz's brother's stepson's kid. I'll pull a few strings, grease a few palms, get him a job as a caddy at the golf club. Well, that would be great, sir. Hey, you know, I love golf. Maybe if, uh, you know, sometime 
I mean, I know you love golf too, and no, I thought. Oh, Hank, you too old, be a caddy. Get back to work. We fast forward to Bobby's first day on the job as a caddy. The two other caddies tell Bobby the trick to being picked by a golfer. It's to make eye contact and to be alert. If no one picks him, then he'll just sit on his butt all day. Since this episode is focused on Bobby not being motivated to do, well, anything, of course Bobby puts his head down and slouches over. Buck walks by and then hands Bobby some money. Not really sure why, considering he wasn't Buck's caddy, and literally he was just sitting there doing absolutely nothing, but good for Bobby. The two other caddies walk over and ask Bobby if he wants to ride ice blocks down a hill. Now how do I- oh! You are ice blocking, my friend! Yeah! Is this a thing? Do people ride blocks of ice down hills? Because I'm totally down. Bobby smashes into the chairman of the membership committee. I don't know exactly what that is, but it does sound pretty important. And then he's taken home by the Everwood security. Sir, your son was involved in an incident near green number six. A club member was incapacitated due to ice blocking. Your son's services as a caddy have been terminated. Oh God, Bobby. Also, sir, your truck is parked more than one foot from the curb. I'm giving you a warning. You're not a cop. That's why it's just a warning. Hank takes Bobby over to Buck's house to apologize, but instead of Buck being upset, he thinks it's funny and makes Bobby his personal caddy. We're going to toast your new job as my personal caddy. Now tell me, Bobby, you really not that some bitch on his ass? <laughs> you know he tried to get me kicked out of the club for throwing my putt at his wife? No one sneezes when Buck Strickland's about to putt. Except for Buck Strickland. We go back to the golf course and Buck is surprisingly being a pretty good boss to Bobby, getting him hot dogs and letting him drive the golf cart. Buck drops Bobby off at home and Bobby shows all the money he made for the day. Now you didn't ask Mr. Strickland to give you a ride home, did you? He insisted and he tipped me a dead president. Hamilton! Way to go, Bobby. Mr. Strickland's not one to throw his money around. He rewards hard work with a fair salary. Look at you, Hank. You are so jealous. When was the last time you were dropped off at home by your boss? Never. And Dale may be onto something here. If you've seen King of the Hill, you know the relationship between Buck and Hank. So Dale is probably right. Promoting you to manager. Oh, oh, manager? Oh, Mr. Strickland, I, 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 I love you. <laughs> Oh. While eating dinner, Bobby and Hank are talking about their day. Mr. Strickland got up under more balls than a midget hooker. Bobby! Where did you learn language like that? The television? No, Mr. Strickland. Just because you're his caddy does not give you the right to repeat it. Take it easy, old top. God dang it, it's 7.15. I'm missing the wheel. And here's where the problem starts. And who would have thought the 12 year old boy is influenced by the terrible human being that his father made him spend the entire day with. Hank goes to Buck's office to talk about what happened with Bobby. And oddly enough, Buck's already on the phone with Bobby. Hank, you won't say hi to your son? Uh, no, but I'm glad I can talk to you both. Mr. Strickland, Bobby used some language last night that he said he got from you. Is that true, Bobby? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Alright then, Bobby. I'll see you at the club. That it, Hank? We go back to the golf course and we see Buck cheating. He hits the ball into the shrubs and tosses it onto the green. Bobby calls him out for it, but Buck has a way of making cheating seem... Mm, okay? Well, isn't that cheating, Mr. Strickland? I'm not gonna lie to you, Bobby. No, it's just being clumsy. And there's no law against being clumsy. That is, unless you're caught. <laughs> what started as Hank trying to teach his son responsibility has turned into Bobby becoming a mini Buck Strickland, and the world only needs one Buck Strickland. Bobby gets home and Hank tells him that they should go golfing tomorrow, just the two of them. Bobby tells Hank that he can't because he's caddying for Buck this weekend. Hank notices the watch Bobby's wearing is Buck's watch, and Bobby says Buck gave it to him. Bobby admits to helping Buck cheat with his quote-unquote hand wedge. He was having some trouble, but I bailed him out with my trusty hand wedge. Bobby, you cheated. There was money on the game besides Link Bratley's a horse's ass. 
He asked me to jump, and I say, how high? He asked me to cheat, and we're on the green in two. Well, there is no getting around the rules in this house. If you like cheating and lying so much, why don't you go to Buck's house? All right, maybe I will. Fine, I'll drive you. Hank, what are you doing? I know what I'm doing. Well, it sounds like you know what you're doing, but I am still too lightheaded to really fully comprehend your plan. I am a little concerned for Peggy here. Clearly, she has given way too much blood at this point. I don't know why no one's going to help her. She should probably go to a hospital. Hank tells Peggy he knows what he's doing, and the minute Bobby steps on his doorstep, Buck will send him away. The next scene, Hank is dropping Bobby off at Buck's, and to his surprise, Buck invites Bobby right in. Hank goes home without Bobby and swears without his nightlight and humidifier, Bobby will be begging to come home within a few hours. The next morning, Hank goes to Buck's house to find Bobby. Sorry to disturb you. I need to talk to Mr. Strickland. Mr. Strickland went to Hot Springs, Arkansas. I press his gambling suit and I pack his naked lady playing cards. He goes last night with Mr. Hill. I'm Mr. Hill. Little Mr. Hill. Oh, dang it. All right. If Mr. Strickland calls, you tell him I'm taking a personal day. We see that Buck took Bobby to a dog race in Hot Springs, Arkansas. Without Peggy or Hank's knowledge, this 67-year-old man took off to a different state with his employee's 12-year-old son. Um, that's kidnapping. He got kidnapped. Buck tells Bobby that he's his new wallet caddy. He has him hold on to his wallet with all of his gambling money inside. Which we do find out later is because when he rips people off and someone tries to get their money back, he doesn't think that they would check Bobby. He wins the dog race bet and they go to a scene with Bobby and Buck hanging out in a hot tub. Hey old timer, you know where Rooster's Crap Game is tonight? Rooster's Crap Game is between 4th and 5th Street, go around back, knock twice and slip a 20 under the door. You ever see someone fish for $40, Bobby? No. Watch this. <laughs> Look at him go! He makes in a year what I make in a week. <laughs> So besides the fact that Buck is a complete jackass here, we see that he's looking for a rooster's crap game. And for those of you who don't know what a crap game is, it's just a dice game people play at like a casino. I've never been into gambling, so I honestly could not explain it much better than that. Gambling is such a crazy concept to me. Like you give money to someone for a very, very small chance to win money in return. Everyone knows that the majority of people don't win. And when you do win, you've spent way more trying to win than what you've actually won. The closest thing to gambling you'll see me do is like those little loot crates that you get on like Call of Duty or like Rocket League. But besides that, you can count me out. Hank's on his way to Hot Springs and the best joke of the entire episode happens. Thanks for letting me know that my tail light was out. Well, I'd want you to do the same for me, officer. Say, can you tell me how much further it is to Hot Springs? Another hour and a half. All right, drive carefully now. I will. Okay, honestly, the joke went over my head the first time that I watched the episode, but Hank is the type that would pull a cop over. Buck and Bobby pull up to a sketchy alley where the crap game is being held. Bobby isn't allowed inside, so Buck tells him to stay outside. Stay out here. I'm going to take half my betting money. You hold on to the rest. Here, hold on to my heart pails. If I'm losing my shirt in there, I'm going to fake a heart attack. Now that's your cue to come in, waving the pill, screaming, My daddy's having a heart attack! My daddy's having a heart attack! Got that? We get this quick shot of Hank making it into Hot Springs, and then it takes us back to the sketchy alley. What are you looking at? Nothing. Come on, baby, forget about him. You're lucky my woman doesn't want me to fight you, little freak, or I'd mess you up good. Buck runs out and tells Bobby that he's winning big time and asks if he should keep going. Bobby is clearly just terrified, as any 12 year old boy would be. Mr. Strickland, how much longer? I threw you... it, I'm on press of five. Lux with me tonight, Bobby. I'm on a gravy train with biscuit wheels. You all emptied out, Carla? Yeah. Mm. Oh, God. That luck runs out pretty quick when two goons walk out shortly after and tell Bobby to give them the money. Your daddy already tried that. We're not buying it. Now give us the money. And the watch. But the watch is mine. Your daddy said you give us the money and the watch. Now come on, kid. The watch. The watch is mine. Bobby then takes off with the watch, and when Buck finds out, he tries to fake another heart attack. One of the goons catch up to Bobby, and it looks like all hope is lost until... Watch. Back off. I'm this boy's father. 
I thought that old guy was his father. No, 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 this one's my dad. This one right here, the one with the golf club. Here. Take the watch. I don't want it anymore. The quicker we're out of hot springs, the better. Buck stumbles out into the alleyway holding his chest, and right before all hell breaks loose, Hank pulls up to save the day. You heard me! I'm having a gut dang heart attack! Mr. Strickland, get in! Get him! Ah, what are you waiting for, Hank? Go, 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 go! go. <laughs> yeah! Come and get me, you dumb the bitches! I do gotta say, I love the fact that Hank slowed the truck down just enough for the mob to catch up and get that one good punch in on Buck. The camera fades to morning with Hank driving Bobby and Buck back to Arlen. So, I guess I'm gonna be punished. You're darn right. First of all, you will not be caddying for Mr. Strickland anymore. Second of all, you're grounded for the rest of the summer. Thanks, Dad. And that's the buck stops here. What did we learn? Buck Strickland is a really awful human being. However, I couldn't imagine King of the Hill without him. Yes, he's a terrible, horrible, horrible person, but he does have one thing going for him. He's very entertaining. I just wish Hank had more of a backbone and stood up for himself more when it came to Buck. Though I do enjoy the entertainment that Buck Strickland gives us, I don't enjoy watching Hank get stepped all over. And I know if this happened with my kid, I definitely would not have went back to rescue him. I would have gotten my son and then left Buck Strickland to the wolves. But all in all, I really did like this episode. How about you? Did you enjoy this episode? Let me know in the comments and let me know what I should talk about next. Until next time, peace. <laughs>